an abundance of tropical signals across the Pacific and Indian Oceans on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for May 13th. So we still don't have any active tropical cyclones, but there's a few that are trying or are going to make an attempt in the next seven days. So there's quite a bit to watch. Three areas of interest that we currently have highlighted that we're going to go through in this parade in just a moment. It's uh, not long now until the Atlantic hurricane season begins, 19 days. Uh, there's still a few storms blowing up across the deep south of the United States today. There is an enhanced risk in effect. And what you'll see there towards the left hand side, it's hard to ignore, a 30% chance that we've got in the Eastern Pacific. And guess what? It's only two days until hurricane season begins. At the moment, National Hurricane Center haven't issued this one yet. Uh, I think they're trying to hang on as best they can until the 15th when they start to issue routine advisories. But we're giving it a 30% chance of development in the next uh, seven days. Uh, a few of the models are on board, but not the Euro. 10% chance in the Western Pacific for another area of interest that's going to try and make an attempt in the next seven days. Obviously we saw what happened with those other recent tropical disturbances uh, and they failed in the end. Well, it's going to try again. The Australian region is quiet and so was the North Indian Ocean as we saw it go by just then. And in Australia, very little cloud cover at all going on there at this time. Of course, they have had a bit of a rocky last few days uh, with severe weather here and there. Uh, let's also look at the Southwest Indian Ocean where we're still giving that area a 40% chance of development. Uh, it's gone down slightly since our last update because uh, the modeling has put back formation. Uh, but it is there, it has got some loose rotation uh, and it does have winds of at least 30 to 35 miles per hour. South Pacific looking very dead and very sorry for itself indeed. We might have to get rid of this slide in future because there is very little to talk about there in the South Pack. No areas of interest. Let's take a look at the established area of interest then, and it's this one in the Southwest Indian Ocean. It's 198 kilometers from Cotabi, 256 from Alphonse Island, 400 from Victoria, the capital of the Seychelles, 425 from the Farquhar Islands, the Southwest, and 749 kilometers from Ansiranana or Ansiranana even, in northern Madagascar. Uh, it's slowly been drifting towards the west and that general movement is going to continue over the next few days and we'll have to wait and see whether it manages to gain some traction. Looking at the Eastern Pacific on satellite imagery, it's clearly getting busy. There's lots of disturbanced or disturbed weather there, lots of uh, cloud coverage and quite a few uh, overshooting tops there with uh, convection. Uh, it doesn't look like any of this will become that tropical cyclone though. Uh, that is likely to appear somewhere off the coast of Central America. It could be that little thing there over Nicaragua, but I don't know about that just yet. Here's the Southwest Indian Ocean system and you can see it's got an extremely broad rotation, a lot of convection over to the left hand side, but that's not where the center is. The center is actually in the middle of our screen there, um, near that other small bank of convection off to the top right. Uh, so. It, that's if it had a center, it doesn't have a proper center yet, but the uh, winds are, uh, you know, congregating all around that area. Now the Western Pacific is looking still quite quiet. Uh, you could see just a little semblance of a rotation possible uh, north of Papua New Guinea. Could that be that next system? Not sure. Uh, this imagery is out of date, so let's move on to the West Pacific. Once again, showing you another view of that on the infrared channels. There's been quite a lot of precipitation over parts of the Philippines today as well, especially further west, western Luzon, uh, and parts of Mindoro. And in the North Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal, uh, there's quite a lot of storms that have been blowing up across Thailand and uh, extending into Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. Uh, and also the southern part of uh, India, getting quite a lot of rain precipitation by the looks of things, as is western Sri Lanka. Sea surface temperatures right now are continuing to increase in the eastern Pacific. That's not a surprise, of course. The temperatures getting up to about 32 degrees now in one or two spots there, south of uh, Guatemala. In 
In the Atlantic, those temperatures are increasing as well with the loop current looking pretty strong now, 28 degrees plus, and uh, warm waters extending over most or a lot of the uh, Gulf of Mexico coast and the Gulf Stream looking decent too. Extremely warm still in the South China Sea with temperatures pushing 32 degrees. Uh, the Philippine Sea is still just catching up there but uh, certainly got some good temperatures there already and up to the Ryukyu Islands starting to get to 28 degrees now in one or two spots. North Indian Ocean is still piping hot in the Bay of Bengal with temperatures of 32 degrees along a big line there from uh, Sri Lanka through to the Andaman Islands and then on to uh, Myanmar. Southwest Indian Ocean still looking okay for maybe this last little storm that might form 28 degrees Celsius where that system is right now. They drop off a little bit near the northern tip of Madagascar though. And around Australia, uh, only a few spots left of good sea surface temperature conditions there, or very good, 28 to 29 degrees Celsius off the Kimberley, uh, off Darwin, and in one little spot in the Gulf of Carpentaria. And in the South Pacific, those temperatures are cooling here as well. Indeed, the 26 degree isotherm has receded completely now for New Caledonia, and the southern islands of Vanuatu are also coming up there as well now. Compared to average then, it's still looking interesting for quite a few spots. The Atlantic as a whole is well above average, especially in the main development region. Still a little cool spot in the Sargasso Sea. Eastern Pacific has that narrow corridor, which is where all the storms form above average. Uh, cooler in the higher latitudes. The Bay of Bengal is piping hot compared to average. And the Western Pacific is generally a little bit above average, particularly in the South China Sea. Southwest Indian Ocean, where that system is, is running about 2 degrees above. South Pacific oceanic heat content looks like this and you can see that there's still a fair amount in the uh, lower latitudes. Uh, it's unusual to see a storm now beyond here but it can happen. Eastern Pacific four or five little blobs there of good OHC and the Western Pacific having a big line there extending from the Philippines to Guam looking very good indeed now. Atlantic is also catching up a little bit too. The Caribbean is uh, doing its best right now, uh, but still a little while before we start to see some higher values escalate into the Gulf and off the uh, eastern seaboard of the United States. So let's check the computer models, and this is the GFS for the next five days. Now, does it develop the eastern Pacific storm within that time frame? Let's wait and see. Where is it? Yeah, we're starting to see a little bit of rotation there south of Mexico and off it pops there. It just about starts up by the 18th there uh, as it moves towards the Gulf of Tehuantepec actually uh, and starts to move bending north at first and then turning towards the west. That's within the five day period. Uh, it is still a little way out obviously uh, so the National Hurricane Center I imagine are pretty hesitant. Now this is the uh, Western Pacific of this potential other system there. The GFS is keen once again, but we know what happened last time. So that's why we're only giving it a 10%. It's not supported by every model, uh, but certainly the GFS is on board with it once again, like it is on board with most things it would seem. Moving through the Micronesian Islands near the end of that five day period and developing into a tropical storm and uh, strengthening fairly quickly. Now look to the southwest Indian Ocean for this other potential system and it's still uh, very difficult to ascertain whether it will develop. It's very late into the season now for, for systems here. And look what's going on in the Arabian Sea as well. It throws up a little tropical cyclone moving eastwards. That would be a real surprise. Uh, GFS is the only one calling for that so I uh, think it's... Uh, a little bit of a fantasy there from the GFS, uh, but the Southwest Indian Ocean system, very broad, tries to develop, maybe just about manages it within that five day period. Regardless of development, it's going to be a very wet affair over the next seven days in the Southwest Indian Ocean, certainly around the Seychelles and those northernmost islands of Mauritius, and indeed, uh, maybe along the coast of northern Madagascar as well. But it's mainly going to be for the Seychelles. Now, I don't know where the islands are on this map because they're too small, uh, but certainly there is some very large amounts of rainfall in the area. Some localized areas could get up to 42 inches of rain, which is uh, really quite a remarkable amount. That's over 1,000 millimeters, uh, but certainly you could su uh, suggest that some areas could receive 500 millimeters on some of those islands, and we could see some flooding concerns. 
Let's look to the longer range then, day 5 to 10, and we start to see the full bulk of this Eastern Pacific cyclone. Well, there it is. The GFS develops it into a Category 1 hurricane there. Does it strengthen a bit more? Yes, it does. It goes back down to the usual line these storms take at this time of year, a little bit lower latitude. Briefly getting to Category 2, by the looks of things, and then starting to loosen up and broaden out towards the end of that 10-day period. We're not going to show you the long range on this one because uh, it's a pretty much a foregone conclusion. It just continues west northwestwards and gradually weakens to oblivion. Now in the Western Pacific, there's this other system, obviously. What happens to this one? Is it the GFS crying wolf again? We'll find out in future, but we know that the GFS is putting on another show with this one because there it goes, northwestwards movement into the Philippine Sea, blowing up into a Category 3 or maybe Category 4 there by the end of that 10-day period. So once again, another storm that's blowing up and another one for all of our Philippine weather community uh, fans. Uh, to keep a close eye on over there as well. I'm sure they will. Southwest Indian Ocean then watching this storm once more. It strengthens then beyond that five day period. So it really starts to get going after that. That's why we're not quite as sure on it developing at the moment because it's a bit longer range for that main area of uh, that main time period. Uh, but there it is, it's, it certainly gets going, it stalls actually, it doesn't move very much at all. Uh, it's staying in place, maybe a slight southeasterly jog, and tries to get to hurricane status twice, and I think it succeeds. So that's interesting. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store, where you can take a look at all our items, as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. We also have our Still Waiting for Hone t-shirts, still available as long as we don't find that storm, which it seems to be taking quite a long time. Well, in the silly range, day 10 to 16, there goes that typhoon and it really blows up once again, a very powerful Category 4 storm, and then it sweeps up towards Japan and once again delivers a typhoon landfall to the main islands of Japan, uh, moving northeastwards. Once again, it's still very unlikely that we would see a scenario like this, and we saw something identical last week with those other systems that failed to form. So, massive question mark on that one and I would uh, be uh, leaning towards this not happening. A uh, little feature in the Bay of Bengal as well, a very broad system that tries to develop in day 10 to 16. It might just about seal off that circulation, but it weakens as it continues northwards, and if it's anything by then, it's a tropical depression landfall over the uh, uh, West Bengal and Bangladesh region. So not much else to say about that one, but something to watch out for for the end of May in the Indian Ocean. Possibly, we'll wait and see. I don't know what else I can tell you about that one. Well, what happened on this day? Well, we don't have to go that far back. It's last year. May 13th, 2023 was the peak of Cyclone Mocha, which reached Category 5 status before making a Category 4 landfall in Myanmar. Quite devastating for the area. We covered it live and with many updates throughout the course of Mocha's life on Force 13. Uh, so there it was, it was moving northeasterly, peaking as a Category 5 there, and made its landfall. It peaked actually at the very start of the 13th of May and made landfall, I think, later that day. Also, the little, little system down in the South Indian Ocean that would later become Cyclone Fabienne. Well, back to today then, and uh, this year in the Atlantic, the first name is Alberto. In the Eastern Pacific, a letter could be on its way. And in the Central Pacific, the next name is Hone, which definitely isn't on its way. Moving on to the uh, Western Pacific then, of course, the next name there is still Winiar. Uh, people thought we might have had it last week, but it failed to materialise. Rimal is next in the North Indian Ocean as well. Just 16 storms so far this year. Uh, which is a little bit below average in terms of accumulated cyclone energy, but quite a good way below average at this point. In the Australian region, the next name is Robin, Southwest Indian Ocean is Iali, and in the South Pacific is Peter. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll see you again tomorrow. Become an ultimate fan today.